And on to these visuals. The, this is a claim that has been made by the Ukraine media. Uh, it shows, this video shows how residential areas and buildings have caught fire after uh, Russian airstrikes and continuous Russian airstrikes that have been taking place. And once again goes on to highlight the way Russian troops are pounding several Ukrainian cities, especially Kyiv and suburb of Kyiv that are facing the Russian aggression day in and out. The assault on uh, area surrounding Kyiv continues as the war has entered day 21. But like Shavan has also been pointing out and we'll try and go to him in just a bit. But that's what he's been telling us that though there is uh, influence of Russian troops on the northwestern and the northeastern border of Kyiv, the southern part of Kiev is still untouched by Russian troops. Uh, the supply chains are running smoothly. Uh, the movement of civilians and troops is also taking place in and out of Kiev Oblast. So that pretty much is the current situation in Kiev. Quickly going across to Samiksha who's joining us. And now let's shift focus to more visuals we're picking up from Kharkiv. Remember Kharkiv has also seen non-stop shelling and bombardment the last few days. And on your screens, Kharkiv rescuers continue to carry out search efforts on the side of destroyed buildings during the war that has managed to save 189 people. So rescue efforts uh, have certainly turned out to be productive in Kharkiv. And this is a report that suggests that 189 people uh, were rescued. They were saved uh, when the rescuers were trying to clear them off of this particular a uh, residential area that has been hit by the Russian strikes perhaps. So an aftermath of Russian attack once again on your television screens in Kharkiv. Remember we've picked up similar scenes from the city of Mariupol as well that has seen a lot of uh, street fight and airstrikes constantly, repeatedly, day in and out. And so is the case in Kherson, which in the latest once again Russian media has claimed has fallen to the Russian troops. Samiksha continues to be with us. Samiksha, you know, given what visuals we're picking up, it becomes important really for the two sides, the negotiators of the two sides to reach uh, a, a decision to come to a conclusion with respect to, with respect to ceasefire because that's a demand that is being made by the Ukrainian side. And for the first time, they've hinted at the fact that the conditions that are being put out by the Russian side are very much on the table and are being looked at closely by the Ukrainians as well. Well, absolutely, Kritsveen, you know, the visuals there on our screens clearly paint the picture of how the Russian troops have been constantly attacking the residential places. The visuals on our screen that we had just put were from the Kharkiv region, the second largest city of Ukraine. And, of course, this comes even as four rounds of talks between Russia and Ukraine have failed to yield any sort of result. All eyes will be on this NATO Defence Ministry meet, which is also underway. Another thing to watch out would be the International Court of Justice will, or will also give its ruling on the Russia's invasion on Ukraine that will again be something to watch out for. The visuals on our screens right now are from Kharkiv region uh, which has also seen unprecedented damage as a result of Russian airstrikes and troops. The aftermath of Russian attack in Kharkiv there, the residential buildings have been reduced to rubble as a result of the airstrikes. Uh, you were talking a short while back about Mariupol where we are told that more than 2,000 civilians have died as a result of the shelling by the Russian troops. In fact, what the UN has also said is that 3 million people have fled Ukraine till now, which only goes on to prove the extent of damage and destruction and thousands of millions of people who have now been rendered homeless as a result of the airstrikes and shelling that has entered day 21 today. Yes, absolutely. Uh, for the moment, Samiksha, thank you. And let's quickly shift our focus once again to Kiev. It's very important for the Ukrainians to hold Kiev. Uh, but Kiev and suburbs around have seen massive firing and shelling take place. So the situation in Kiev also remains extremely, extremely critical at this point in time. Uh, the last few hours have seen a lot of airstrikes take place on residential buildings in Kiev itself. Here's a report on the same. Russian troops continue to press their offensive across Ukraine, pounding populated areas with artillery and airstrikes. A series of Russian strikes had hit residential neighborhoods in the outskirts of the Ukrainian capital. Now in the Podolsky district of Kiev, Russian ammunition has hit a 10-story residential building. First to fifth floors of the building was on fire as a result of airstrikes. 
The firefighters were able to squash lingering flames and smoulders throughout the structure. The state emergency service rescued one person who was also hospitalized. As war enters its 21st day, Russian forces have stepped up strikes in an attempt to encircle and cut off the Ukrainian capital. Agency report for Republic TV.